In this new adventure in the Icelandic islands, we will explore and photograph some of the most beautiful lakes. The journey is in the Long Quiet River, as you will see in this episode. What are your goals when you're traveling? My intentions is all about photography. When I stop in one spot, it's because I have the intention to take photographs of them. And today we are exploring a new area. It's not very popular for tourists or even photographers. I haven't seen much about that. And we are in the, always in the highlands of Iceland as usual. I spend my summer time here and we are exploring an area which could be called Lake District because there are so many lakes around and so many mitches that bother you the, the face all day long. Well, anyway, I'd like to discover and explore new areas. And just to make new photographs, go deeper into the heart of this beautiful country, and also take some nice videos to share with you guys. Hope you will enjoy this episode. Look at these bastards, they are all around my face, they don't give me a second break, not a single second. Bastards. Outside it was just impossible to take any video, it's full of midges.
That's probably my favorite activity. Exploring, scouting in a new area. Uh, just in front of this great mountain there with a lake. I decided just to explore a location where there is no trail, no tracks, nothing. And um, my eyes were caught by this beautiful shaped mountain in the background. And now I'm trying out some different composition. Mm -hmm. Let's see how it works. Uh, there's nothing we can do about the weather conditions and just have to deal with it. Typical Icelandic weather. Finally, after a whole day of patience, I get rewarded with some nice sunset colors. Supper's ready. Cheers, guys. Hmm.
I'm in an awkward situation. I was walking up there on the ridge behind me and the trail was going straight so I stupidly followed the, the trail. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the trail is becoming all in gravel. Uh, gravel and and steep. So I found myself uh, on my ass and I started to slip down the hill from up there. So far so good. Uh, but I definitely made a mistake following the trail. I should have made a detour, uh, a safer route. But now I'm, I'm slipping down on my ass, and step by step. I, I can absolutely not stand up because uh, my feet are unable to, to lift because there's only gravels all around and it's so steep I, I cannot stand up. So what I'm doing is I slip down on my ass. Hope uh, I catch you soon down with nothing broken, but it should be fine. I just finished on my ass all the way down on the ridge that you see behind me. I came to a tricky area with only gravels and I could not go back and not go forward and then I had no more place to put my feet and I finished on my ass. So I was able not to panic. I'm lucky uh, um, I'm finished without any injury. It could have been worse I think because at the start when I slipped I had absolutely no grip at all I tried to I tried to break with my my hands with my arms with my with my sticks but there was only gravel so the gravels are rolling down and it was pretty steep so we just see in life should I say why you should not go solo hiking. My main intention when I travel is photography. Solo hiking gives me the opportunity to connect myself with nature and be one with nature. Another reason why I'm solo hiking is just because it's a unique experience. It's really something unique. No, photography has nothing to do with pressing the shutter button. It has nothing to do with the gear. It has nothing to do with the settings. No, photography is conveying emotions. First of all, I have to connect with the nature. Once I get the connection, of course I have to find some good spots. There is no recipe to find a good spot. For me, a good spot is when all the elements work together and there is a relationship between the elements. That's what I'm looking for. It's a foreground with middle ground with the main subject. Of course, it's light. Light conveys a lot of emotions. So, the first thing I'm trying to reach is getting into the skin of a poet. 
I'm trying to get in relation with my environment. Once I got these elements, I try to put them together in a composition. And I try to convey in this composition what I am feeling at that time, at that place. Whatever your gear is, your settings are, that doesn't matter. When you see a painting by Monet, Gauguin, Picasso, is the first question you ask about that, what was the pencil and the brand of the painting he used? I don't think so. So, photography is the same. 